we're back and we are going to wrap up with Batman. Josh, you are a collector and mm -hmm. you collect a lot of cool items. You had found something unique here um, earlier that you brought in for this episode? Yeah, yeah. This was this was added to the collection just this morning. Um, yeah, my mom and I went out to an estate sale this morning and found a badge of a charter member of the Batman Robin Society. That's cool. Yeah, and that's uh, 1966. So that would be right about when the, uh, the TV series started with, you know, um, yeah. Adam West and Burt Ward. So... You know, obviously Batman was really big at that point. So, mm -hmm. and now I can say I'm a charter member. That means I helped form it. You can't take it away. I have a pin that says it. Just like having one of those Justice League membership cards, you know, signed by Batman. It means you know him. <laughs> <laughs> did, did you go back in time? Did you go Josh Holderbaum beyond? Hey, you, you, don't, proud? you don't know what I do in my, my spare time. I might, huh? I might be orchestrating all of this stuff behind the scenes just to give us a show. All right. That's true. So this pin is 50 years old, actually. Would, not, would that be correct? Yeah. yeah. And yeah. they're actually, by the time this episode airs, they will have shown or have been released the Batman. Uh, did you see that where they're having an animated Batman 66 special mm. with... Uh, the voices of oh, Batman cool. and Robin from the TV show. That's cool. Batman number six, I Am Gotham epilogue. Gotham girl Claire had a breakdown. Yeah. She had a psychological breakdown. She had an episode where she is talking to her brother Hank like he's still around, and she shaves her head completely to a buzz cut. Mm -hmm. And she is not doing good at all. Yeah, and she's still wearing the... Uh... You know, the tattered uniform, mm -hmm. which which says something else, too. I mean, I'm sure Batman would have a, you know, a spare uniform where he could whip up something from, mm -hmm. you know, maybe, I don't know, leftover stock from Batgirl or something. But, yeah, she's... Yeah, Psycho, she? Psycho Pirate... Between Oops. Psycho Pirate and what happened with her brother, it had a long-lasting effect on her. Right. This issue, you see her as she's taking care of villains, which we'll talk about in a moment, she is continuously talking to her brother like he is still here. Mm -hmm. And she's telling jokes and she's saying, well, you remember when we did this and you remember when we used to do that. Batman's watching from a distance, observing when is the right time to go in and try to help her because she's so fragile. She's still using her superpowers. Duke notices it can comes to the conclusion that she's trying to kill herself. Yeah. Yeah. She's I, using as much of her powers as possible to uh, kind of a self suicide. Yeah. Well, or I mean, it's also possible. She doesn't even notice. Mm -hmm. I mean, this, this might be just a, a subconscious thing to keep going till you keep, you know, keep going till you fall dead. Yes. Um, in the meantime, these are some pretty, uh, Let's talk about the villains, because I don't know really how to say it. What is going on with these villains? This issue was, it's not about the villains. It's about Claire. It's about Gotham Girl. It's mm -hmm. about Batman opening up to Gotham Girl and letting her know that he has went through what she has went through. And he reconciled because he had Alfred to help him out. Although Alfred says to Batman, you dress up like a giant bat in your adulthood and jump through roofs, jump off of roofs every night. Do you think I really was there? I really helped you out at all. But Batman, he show, he uh, tells his true identity of Bruce Wayne to Gotham Girl and hugs her. And I think all along, Gotham Girl knew what was going on. Mm -hmm. She said, I miss him, as Batman said that he would talk to his mother. And it kind of implies that he still does. Yeah, yeah, and that... Mm -hmm. It's sort of implied that Batman kind of got through most right. of that, or Bruce Bruce got through most of that on his own. Mm -hmm. Really, I mean, Alfred says he didn't have that much to do. I'm sure he did. I think that might have been Alfred's sort of snarky response to right. you know, <laughs> Batman asking asking that question. But I'm, it, it does sound like Bruce came through this mostly mm -hmm. on his own, of, of his own willpower and just reframing the situation yes. in a way that, that in a way that Gotham Girl can't do quite yet. Agreed. 
hopefully Gotham Girl with Bruce, with Alfred, and with Duke is able to have a nice support group. And I don't think she'll be a superhero or helping defend Gotham, but at least she can get over this. Mm -hmm. But what about these villains? <laughs> <laughs> what about these villains? Let's, uh, Colonel Blimp, Captain Stingery, uh, and Kite Man. Mm -hmm. Greatest Batman villains ever or greatest DC villains ever? Is there a D for <laughs> D-listing villains of the... Why? <laughs> I... I don't know. I, I mean, they're, they're villains that aren't going to be any threat. Right. Certainly. I mean, Colonel Blimp is a guy with a blimp yes. that, that takes submarines and presumably other stuff. And he's done it before. <laughs> he says mm -hmm. he's, he's stolen a submarine before. I mean, Captain <laughs> Stingery is a, a guy who's off his meds. Right. And Kite Man, who I love, has to exclaim that he's Kite Man <laughs> to the guy, to you know, the poor woman who he, yep. he robs. You know, just inexplicably yells, Kite Man, in her face. Mm -hmm. It's just, it made me laugh quite a bit. But it is, it, it's kind of an absurd juxtaposition where you have a really serious story arc with what Claire is going through, and then you throw in these mm -hmm. guys. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's funny, but it, it also, <laughs> it just, it, it jives together with what Gotham City is. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are the silly aspects and there are... That's true. There are the, the fragile, serious aspects. And I didn't even mind the silly aspects of this issue because the, the seriousness kind of outweighed it. It was almost uh, a humorous of, okay, it's a... Oh my gosh, she doesn't even notice the absurdity of these people because mm -hmm. she is coping. She, well, she isn't coping, but she is so wrapped up into her emotions that this absurdity of walk the plank, we're not Batman, walk the plank. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she picks him up, oh, hey, this is da-da-da. Yeah. yeah. Well, and to be fair, Batman didn't even notice that when he mm -hmm. beat down Captain Stingery after, uh, oh, yeah. after <laughs> Captain Stingery tried to, <laughs> tried to come after him. It was a kick to the face, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Knocked yeah. him out. <laughs> yeah, it seems like seems like what I told Tom before is somewhere Grant Morrison mm -hmm. is probably shaking his fist saying, Dang it, DC, I wanted to use those characters. <laughs> oh, yes, definitely. <laughs> oh, yeah. man. The end of this issue, though, Batman is so outraged and over what happened to Claire, Gotham Girl, that he goes sees Amanda Waller and gets information about the Psycho Pirate. The Psycho Pirate is in Santa Prisca. Mm-hmm. And he has been captured by Bane. So Batman's going down to confront Bane. I, no, I think Bane was behind all of this. Yeah. Bane yeah. was behind Bane all was of this. trying to get Psycho Pirate to him. Yes. You know, basically, Hugo Strange mm -hmm. sent Psycho Pirate down there after he, was, he yeah. was done with him. And Amanda says, if you go down and do this, you're essentially working for me. And this might even be, I've got some people that can help you, but this is, could be considered suicide. Mm -hmm. So the Wrath of Bane, after we go through the uh, Night of the Monster Men, it is going to be I Am Bane, the storyline. And I think from I Am Bane, we are going to have, in the future, the team up of Batman with the Suicide Squad, which will lead to the Justice League and the Suicide Squad team up. Batman is not going to be very forgiving on Bane, and or the Psycho Pirate. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm curious to see why Bane needs the Psycho Pirate. Yes. I mean, what, what plot he has. I'm also kind of curious to see, is the Suicide Squad, while he's talking about the established Suicide Squad, right. the one that has Harley Quinn and Killer Croc. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, most of them aren't going to have... I'm sure Captain Boomerang doesn't have any favorable opinions of Batman. No. Either, and I'm sure vice versa. So it'll, it'll be interesting to see what those interactions are like. Right. Batman has been a great uh, series. This I Am Gotham kind of reaffirms that while there might be other heroes that are willing to step up and help Batman out in terms of Gotham, he truly is the only hero that can be dependent upon to save and be there for Gotham each and every time. Mm -hmm. He's the only one mentally prepared for that task. Yes, even he's though been challenged. Yep. He's been conditioned through the years at a young age. Mm -hmm. And with this, this is going to wrap up ending our episode of Comic Book Co. Any wrapping, closing thoughts on the issues that we discussed this week? 
Well, it's a lot of new beginnings for a lot of these titles. I mean, we've had story arcs end. We have Batman Beyond. Yes. Not even really starting a story arc yet, but sort of getting the lead up to Batman Beyond Rebirth number one, and then wherever that goes from there. So it's it's interesting to see where where things will go. That's very true. For this episode of Comic Book Co, I'm Tom Morris. And I'm Josh Holderbaum. And we will see you on next time. If you have any thoughts or any opinions on any of the comic books we've discussed, remind to drop us a line at Delve Into the Void on our Facebook and our YouTube site. So until next episode, we will see you next time.